Hi guys, welcome to Asher and Gad channel, making Africa home again, one family at a time. So we're on site again on this glorious roasting Saturday afternoon to give you an update and to give you quite a number of tips on this exciting episode. So follow me, let's start with the uh, external temporary security hut. <laughs> The, the frames of it were being done. We had the two by four posts, which were used as the frame and used as the, the roof structure. Now, as you can see, we've got all the, all the plywood around it done. We've got the ceiling, the, sorry, the roofing sheets all done. Uh, again, it's a temporary structure, so we didn't spend too much money on it. We're just using about 0.2 or 0.3 millimum uh, thick of, on the roofing sheets. But let's go inside to see what the, this really good camp, carpenter has done for us. Right, so in here guys, we've got this, this office space for the security guard, okay? Office space here, and the carpenter has put a couple of uh, plywood separators for us so that you can, the, the guy can go in here and he can have a space for a shower here in the corner. Very, very cleverly, he's put roofing sheets, inverted roofing sheets into the shower area so when he's having a bath, then the water doesn't get in the wood, which is very good. Then there's then there's space for a toilet, and that's that's the water water supply that we showed you last time. We'll fit a toilet in there, and then that will that will that all makes sense, uh, guys. Again, electrically, obviously the security guy is going to need some lighting in here. He's going to need a socket. Okay, so because we've got lighting and sockets along the external wall, but all we're going to do is we're going to extend one of the circuits from the fence wall, extend one of the lighting circuits here into the room, okay? And that light will just be probably more a, a PIR operated light, one here and one here. If you don't know what PIR means, PIR is a passive infrared sensor. And what that means is that when you walk into the room, it's going to turn on the light automatically. And it will keep the light on as long as there's, there, there is motion, or as long as the room is occupied. That's the cheapest way to do it. Because rather than go back into the house and switch it up from inside the house, it would all be on a PIR lighting and it will give them a socket as well. We have waterproof sockets on the external wall, right? So we'll extend that circuit into here as well. Cheap, nice, cheap, cheap, uh, cheap and cheerful rather than going back into the house. All right. So that's an update on the security hut. That's looking good. Looking good. So let's now quickly go back into the house because Crystal is roasting. It is so hot today. Aren't you fish? We love the heat. <laughs> Who loves the heat? I love the heat. I don't. I love the summer. I love the summer. I don't love the heat. I don't love the heat. Okay. Uh, so, guys, uh, thank you, Hoa, that um, Stone Depot have delivered the all the marble marble tile pieces. Okay. So we have all these lovely designed marble tiles for our staircase, okay? And you got this, you will notice these three lines here, and then that was Crystal's particular choice. They, they, they are anti-slip lines, which go on the tread of the staircase, just to prevent you from slipping. So these are all the treads, okay? And then over there, we've got all the risers. What do I, what do I mean by treads and risers? Very simply, Right. These, these, these are the um, these are the risers over here, okay. And Chris, do you remember the, the the name of the design of this Monte Carlo? That's it, Monte Carlo. It's a Monte Carlo staircase marble tile from Stone Depot. So if you don't know what tread and risers are, here we are. So this is a typical typical step, of 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 course. And it's important that whoever you use, whether you use Stone Depot or whoever else, they have to come to your site. When the steps are fully screeded, the balustrade, uh, uh, the steps are fully screeded, uh, screeded, sorry, in order to get the dimensions as accurate as possible. Because this is the riser. So guys, for those of you who don't know what a riser or a, a tread means, okay, riser, this is, this, is a, this is a step. A step has a riser and a tread. It means you rise from here to here and your foot treads on here. So that's the tread and that's the riser. Okay, so every, a step has two pieces. Count the number of steps and therefore you know the right number of pieces to make sure you have the right number of pieces delivered. Okay, now, 
For those of you who watch our videos and are subscribed, you will know that we had an issue with Stone Depot, so therefore we decided not to use them to install. Uh, our Tyler will install. We have seen his work, he's installed marble tiles elsewhere, and we're happy with him doing that. He'll cut a U shape around this leg, which will look nice and we've grouted no problems at all. We've seen his work and so we're, we're absolutely happy. And uh, the bright side of that is it, it, it was a cost saving because Stone Depot, even though they're very good, they're also very expensive. So that was a cost saving for us to get the tiler to install it. So happy days there, absolutely. Okay, here, yeah. Monte Carlo tiles, we are looking forward to that, absolutely. So now let's go and see a completely finished tiled bathroom, which looks really, really good. Let's go up and have a look. So guys, have a look. Have a look at the, at the creativity of Guy. That is the, the Mrs. Crystal. She's in charge. She's the creative director of Asher and Guy Building Consultancy. This is an amazing bathroom, an amazing choice. Chris, what did the what did the what did the Twyford tilers tell you? And I think they were amazed about the tiles you were selected in the combinations, weren't they? Yeah, they said that. Um, what do you say? That normally they have people who come to choose just plain tiles, but the way I've chosen them are matched the different patterns that they haven't seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. I actually had to lay them. I get. I got them to lay the tiles on the floor, floor so that we could match them. So they said they really want me to take pictures. Oh, okay. Once awesome. it's awesome. finished, awesome. to show them. Awesome. Have you taken a picture of the to show them? I have done, yeah. but I haven't shown them yet. Yes. I took the picture today, so I will show them. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. So let me talk about this. So guys, I'm sitting on, on the in, on, in, in the shower right now, so we can have, we can stand and have a shower, or you know maybe you can have a have a little seat here as well. This is the shower area. Okay. You've got a little soap dispenser, which again was a, a crystal's inspiration. So they cut. This is a this is a hollow block. They use. We typically use five inch hollow blocks from the first block upwards. So this is a hollow block. Just cut in the new tile in between, how are your soap and everything in there. Okay, uh, we have a little bit of delay when our builder had me install the shower drain. Yes, okay, so the tiles had to wait for that to be installed. Can you see the shower drain? This, this shower drain had to be installed. Plastic shower drain is about 12 cities or so. Had to be installed so the tilers can cut perfectly around this and tile around it very nicely. Now, uh, we have decided not to go for the shower cubicle. You can get a full glass shower cubicle from places like Chemo, Palace Home Decor, and the rest. But, um, I mean, that's your personal choice. We've gone there. You can do that if you like, but they are very, very expensive. What we prefer, like where we're living now, we've got this little half, half block upstand here on the ground. Half block upstand, you tile around it, and then all you then do is to have the glass ceiling, uh, sorry, the glass sliding or opening doors of your shower on here with rubber, obviously rubber seals, and just go up to the roof, up to the ceiling of your of your of your bathroom or as high as you want really. And that is far cheaper, it does the job. Now, for this particular structure, you've got a choice. You can either, either use half block, half blocks all around, and then uh, screen over it and tile it. Or what we did, again, a cheaper solution, we had the carpenter put wood around the borders, then we filled the, 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 the gaps, if you like, with screen. When that was dry and solid, then we put the tile over, which was, which was a bit cheaper to do also, okay? So, that's the tower. Over here is uh, Chris has been honoring me. She wants a jacuzzi, she wants a jacuzzi. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, this is space for a jacuzzi, okay? And if you're gonna have a jacuzzi, remember that you need a power outlet because it's power that needs to get all the bubbles that come into the jacuzzi. Jacuzzi always needs power. From an electrical point of view, you know that water and electrical doesn't mix. So make sure that this electrical circuit is on an RCBO, residual current circuit breaker. Yeah, so that if there's any uh, risk of electric shock, which there shouldn't be, then that RCBO offers you extra protection. Okay, so that's a, a completed, almost more or less completed town bathroom, uh, and uh, we're pretty happy with this result. Yeah, aren't you guys? Yeah, pretty happy. Fine, thank you. They've done a great job. Really. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. 
So guys, we are back in the electrical room. And again, if you are subscribed to our channel, you, you would have seen this before, uh, the, the changeover electrical system. I want to talk about something I didn't talk about in the last video. Um, and really, again, I've spoken to another really qualified electrician in Ghana who really says exactly what I say. Sorry, that, that was the first person you wanted. The me. first person I wanted, you know, who wasn't available, unfortunately, at the time. Uh, very, very good on my level, understands all the testing, understands all the voltage fluctuation issues in Ghana, really, really knows that. ECG, really, they, they're not doing great, I have to admit. For example, in the UK, uh, the equivalent of ECG in the UK is UK Power N, UK, UK PN, UK Power Networks. And when they're designing an area, because I've worked with them for many years, 20, 20 odd years, when, they, when they're designing an area, they look at the load of each area. I've got, and they've got a number of houses in this area, I have an office in this area, this is the load. We'll put this load on L1, phase one, put this load on L2, phase two, put this load on L3, L, phase three. They try to balance, it's all in design, it's not by accident. They try, they try to balance the, the count or balance the load across all the different phases in a particular area so you don't get over voltage issues or under voltage issues you know it will help to, to balance everything else and this and i thought as much this electrician confirmed to me exactly that ecg they don't really bother you know and so so when, when people complain about they're having low voltages then they make some changes in the substation and the voltage increases and damage the equipment and, and and the other way around as well so i'm really really happy that we made the decision to buy this this um, this piece of this machinery here this automatic voltage regulator if the voltage is too low, it, it raises it. If the voltage is, is too high, it lowers it. Now, in the UK, the, the voltage band for all equipment is 230 volts nominal plus 10% minus 6%. Okay, if you, have a, if you have any voltage between that, then you're generally okay. In Ghana, I'm told by the electricians that I, I talked to, the nominal is 230 volts, but it's plus minus 11 percent okay plus minus 11 percent if you're anywhere within that band that uh, band then you should be okay also okay now can't do the math too much in my head but if i had 230 volts let's say plus 10 percent that would be about, about 246 by my limit so about two, let's say about 246 volts between the upper limit and the lower limit will be about uh, 230 about 207 volts so you want to be between 207 and 246 volts you want to be in that range but i've heard of people going even below 207 and above 246 simply because ECG hasn't done correct design town planning and they've overloaded some phases than others. But let's see if we can demonstrate that to see what's happening in our local area. So if the lovely Chris points to the automatic voltage regulator. I've always loved you. You always loved me, right? <laughs> so guys, we are currently on L1, okay? So L1 is showing 214 volts, okay, which is fine. It's in the range. It should, it should, it should be absolutely fine. But let's see what's happening on L2. So I'm going to head over to my first changeover switch, and I'm going to change neutral position, and then change back to L2. Okay, so we're back on L2. L2, again, not, not bad. Not bad, still in the range, 213 volts. So similar to L1, so that's not bad. That's not bad. I'd rather prefer a bit higher, but that's still in the in the range. That's fairly well balanced. Yeah, fairly, fairly well balanced, and that is that's a pretty good thing. So now let's go to L3, okay, to see what's happening there. Okay, so how do we go to L3? We're now on L2. So let's say we've lost power to put that in the neutral zero position and then we move on to L3. So let's move that back to L3. L3, 220 volts wonderful so that clearly shows you in this area l3 is the lightly loaded phase okay which means in all the buildings around us a lot a lot of the load the buildings the shops a lot of the load in the area is concentrated on phase one and phase two because the more load you have the lower the voltage but clearly you can see from this demonstration that l1 and l2 were around 212 214 volts but L3 now is 220, 221 volts. So, so L3 hasn't got much load on it in the area, which means L3 is a bit more stable, which means L3 is less risk because there's less customers on it, there's less load on it. So if I look at that, I will keep our building at L3, on L3. 
But this, this is actually the second time I've done this and I've realized that L3 always have, has a higher voltage on it in this area because there's not enough customers, which suggests to me that L3 would be the, the safer bet to be on for a long term. Now, guys, so you know, uh, I hope we're, quite, we're very, very busy, but I'm hoping that in the next week or two, we've already done the video, a video will be released explaining this changeover system in detail. It can be manual, it can be automatic, depend on, depending on your own budget, but there'll be a video explaining this in, in a bit more detail. There'll be an ebook, and in that ebook, you're going to get the actual design, the actual engineering design, the actual electrical schematics, the actual internal wiring diagrams, which are very important. And you're going to get a, a manual option, an automatic option that can allow you to plug in a solar, a generator, and all these other, and mains, all these other uh, options. You're also going to get another cheaper option that can still, that brings in all three phases, but still allows you to power your entire house, whether you're on one phase or two phase, whatever you are. So that's, you're going to have a number of options in that ebook. Right? And basically, I'm going to try and make it as detailed but also as basic as possible so you can literally, with the wiring diagram, with the schematic, you can literally hand it over to your electrician if you're interested for him to him or her to install. Now, just because you've handed it over to an electrician, remember this is Ghana, just, don't just hand it and walk away. Hand it over to him and be the project manager either yourself if you're in the country or somebody else that you trust to manage the process to monitor it stage by stage because and i i, I said this previously when i first gave this to the electrician and i'm not sure whether maybe he was embarrassed to say he didn't understand it he said he understood it i drew it for him he said he understood it uh, but when he first installed it and i came to have a look all over the place completely and totally wrong he did not understand Okay, so I had to, he installed all of this first, I had to rip it all off the wall and really, literally, I had to stand by him to say, why phase one here, why phase two here, why phase three here, why the neutral this way, and then everything worked. And then it was after a couple of weeks and he realized, oh yes, actually, I, I now understand your design. It's really, 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 really resilient. I now understand the design. So just, in, just because an artisan in Ghana tells you that they understand, that doesn't necessarily mean they understand. Their understanding will come in the actual practical application or practical delivery of their work. Yeah? Talk is cheap. You know, you don't judge somebody by their talk, judge them by their actions, especially when it comes to your money that is being spent. Okay? So, let me now switch to L1 because I just, whilst we're, we're, we're not here, I just switch back to L1. I like to keep it on L1. We're not in the building anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So, to L1. And there we are, 213 volts, back to the lower voltage because there's too many customers in the area on L1 and L2. Okay, well, that is, um, that brings, in fact, before we go, guys, sorry, before we go, if you haven't watched already, click on, on top here to watch how much power do you need for your home. Make sure you have the right amount of power coming into your home when you apply to ECG. Okay, if you haven't watched that video, go and watch it, okay? And also, if you click over here, there's another video that we did recently, which is all about the cost and the process of obtaining electricity from ECG in Ghana, okay? Because that is a, a, a torrid process also. So you need to understand that. Just click over here. If you haven't watched it, please go and watch it before you apply because it, it's not quick. It took us about 12 to 14 weeks to get power onto our site. All right, guys. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, site update. As usual, please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you always be aware when we release an educational and exciting video for your viewing pleasure. All right, so from Chris, it's... Okay, Guys, yeah, see you next time. Oh, oh, oh.